Hi students, and welcome to today's lesson on describing connections. Please take out your iReady reading book and turn to page 73. While you're turning to page 73, let me say that I hope each of you have had a great week, that you were able to enjoy yourself and do some things that you like to do. Also, I hope that you're ready for a fun-filled week of learning. So let's go ahead and get started. In order to describe connections, we have been learning some skills to help us describe connections and how two things, pieces of information fit together. Um, we have been learning how to describe the connection between two individuals, events, ideas, or pieces of information with prompting and support. We've been learning how to order events in a correct sequence. And we've also been learning how to identify cause and effect in pairs of events. If we look at page 74, excuse me, page 73, getting a little bit ahead of myself. If we look at page 73 in the text bubble at the top of the page, it says, to connect means to fit together. Events and ideas in informational text can connect in different ways. Our types of connections, we have two types of connections as noted by the two red arrows. And our examples of those connections are in our yellow highlighted boxes. Two types of connections that we're going to look at today. The first one, events follow each other in time order. I want you to take out your pencil and draw a rectangular box around the word time order. This lets us know time order means a sequence of events. Something's going to happen first, then next, and so on and so forth. Number one says new leaves grow in spring. Number two says flowers bloom in summer. <clears throat> so I want to ask you a question because these two events are telling us about changes in nature from one season to the next. Seasons happen in time order. First new leaves grow in the spring, next flowers bloom in summer. So can the order of these events change? What do you think? No, the order of these events cannot change because summer does not come before spring and spring does not come after summer. So the first season is spring followed by summer, then autumn and winter. So first, the new leaves have to grow, and then the flowers can bloom. So you are going to take, and we're going to highlight this answer. Our answer is going to be no. Now, the second type of connection that we're going to look at is one event or idea causes another. I want you to take out your pencil and draw a rectangular box around the word causes. We're gonna talk about cause and effect relationships. So, cause, the reason for something happening. Effect, what happened. Cause plus effect explains why things happen and signal words that help us identify cause and effect are so, because, therefore, since, if, then, so that, without, cause, effect, how, and explain. 
So a lot of rain falls at once, rivers rise and flood. So the rivers rose and flooded, why? Because it rained a lot. So in order for the rivers to rise and flood, first a lot of rain had to fall. Describing connections between events and ideas helps us to understand and remember key details. First and next are clue words about time order. So and because are clue words about cause and effect. Authors sometimes use clue words to show how they connect events and ideas. If there are no clue words, you have to think about the details provided to figure out the connections. Then you can use clue words on your own to describe the connection between the two events. Let's look at two examples. On Monday, <clears throat> excuse me, on Monday I went to music class. On Tuesday I played outside. These two events are connected by time order, but one does not cause the other to happen. I forgot to brush my hair. My hair was messy all day. These two events are in order and one does cause the other. The cause and effect connection tells why your hair was messy. And the reason it was messy all day is because you forgot to brush it. So students, when you're looking for and describing connections, you want to focus on key details and understand how those key details fit together in order to become an outstanding reader. Next, we're going to turn to page 74. And as you notice, we're going to be using the book Butterflies and Moths to answer the questions on this page. So we're on page 74 right now, but we're going to be looking in the book Butterflies and Moths and reading pages 10 and 11. In this book, we're gonna read about two events and how they are connected to each other. We're gonna figure out the connection. So event one is the life of a butterfly or moth begins with an egg. Number two, the egg has a tiny moving dot inside of it. So now we're looking on pages 10 and 11 in our book. At the top of the these two pages, we notice a picture. And right up under the picture, we notice what we call a caption. A caption is a text feature. And this text feature is going to give us information about the picture that we see. As soon as a monarch butterfly caterpillar hatches, it eats its old eggshell, shown at 45 times the actual size. So this picture of this monarch butterfly caterpillar we see is 45 times the actual size. So you can imagine just how tiny this caterpillar would be in real life. Let's read page 10. The life of a butterfly or moth begins with an egg, no bigger than a grain of sand. This egg may look like a ball, a barrel, or a saucer. It may have been laid alone or with a group of eggs. Some butterflies lay their eggs on top of each other, like stacks of tiny teacups. About a week after it is laid, each egg will have a tiny dot inside, and the dot will be moving. With a hand lens, you will see that the dot is the head of a caterpillar, chewing a hole to wiggle its way out. Page 11. When the caterpillar crawls out, it is barely bigger than a comma, and all it wants to do is eat. 
first it may eat its old eggshell. Then it starts on the main course, which is usually right under its feet. That is because most caterpillar mothers lay their eggs on the favorite food plant of their young. So after a baby hatches, it just eats everything in sight. After a caterpillar is very good at that. It has strong jaws to chew up chunks of food. So sometimes authors use clue words to show connections. We want to go back in our text and look for clue words that tells us about the events that are described. The words begins and after tell me that something happens at the start and something else happens later. So I think these events are connected by time order. To check, I'll use time order words. First, an egg is laid. Next, a tiny dot moves inside the egg. Now that makes sense to me. So we're looking at what? We're looking at time order. So let's go back and review just to make sure that we're answering the question and we're answering it correctly. So the question that we want to answer is, what kind of connection links these two particular events together? Now, in the blue box, we have a hint. The hint says, did one event cause the other to happen? So, did one event cause the other to happen or did they just happen in a order? They happen in an order because first, the life cycle of a butterfly has to begin with an egg. The tiny dot moving on the inside of the egg does not come before the egg. So we have a starting point of an egg and then next we go to the tiny dot moving on the inside. So we want to answer our question and we can do that by clicking here in the text box and typing our answer in. And you want to make sure boys and girls that you go back and do this in the assignment. We're gonna type the events happen in time order. Now, let's go back and check our writing to make sure that we have all the components that we need. First, does our sentence begin with a capital letter? Yes, it begins with a capital T. Does our sentence end with a punctuation mark? Notice I said punctuation mark, boys and girls, not a period, because not all sentences end with a period. Sentences that end with a period make a statement. We also have sentences that end with a question mark that ask a question, and sentences that end with an exclamation mark show excitement. So we have a capital letter to begin our sentence, we have a punctuation mark, and our sentence is complete because it makes sense. Once again, make sure that you complete this within the assignment. Once you type your answer in, go to the top and click share, and it will share your assignment with me so that I will be able to grade it and look at it and know that you have completed it. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask me. I'm here to help you boys and girls, and I will see you back real soon. Have a good rest of your day.